Hello and welcome to the President's Podcast right here on the record with the Ohio Senate. The views, the news excludes. I'm John Fortney. I'm your host, the Director of Communication with the Majority Caucus, the Republican Caucus in the Ohio Senate. Coming to you today from Independence, Ohio, following a border security forum hosted by State Senator Jerry Serino, who's a Republican from Kirtland, Ohio. And we have a very special guest joining the podcast this week, Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost. Thanks for your time, sir. Great to see you. Good to see you. Well, first of all, this forum generated a ton of great comments from a r- very select panel of county sheriffs, local police chiefs, county commissioners, uh, people from the Ohio Attorney General's office. Why was it important, Senator, to have this forum? Well, I think what, what motivated me to uh, put this forum together, John, was that um, th- a belief by, unfortunately, by many people, in, in my district that I interface with, that the border issue uh, is, um, uh, is isolated to the southern border states. Uh, and in, as we all know, certainly more so after today, that, that even though Ohio is not a southern border state, uh, we are severely impacted by the terrible border policies uh, that we're seeing today. Uh, and I thought it would be great to get law enforcement, local mayors, sheriffs from the counties, uh, as well as prosecutors, uh, along with the attorney general here, to to talk about what is the impact of these, I think, horrific policies that we're seeing today uh, on on Northeast Ohio and Ohio in general. Yeah, we're not insulated here, are we, Attorney General, from what the crisis is at the border? In December of 2023, there were 250,000 border incursions, which was a record high for one month. That's just one month. So we're looking at millions of people streaming across the border. So Ohioans should be concerned about this. Well, we're actually seeing the impacts right here in Ohio. Uh, The truth is that every state is a border state. Um, When you don't have the border secured, once you come into America, we travel freely between states. Uh, And in fact, the Constitution prohibits Ohio from saying, uh, for example, to Michigan residents that they're not allowed to come here, Uh, although that might not be a bad idea. (laughs) For Michigan, especially. On a certain day in November. (laughs) Uh, But the the bottom line, and we talked about this here, uh, is we see uh, our tracing criminal activity that's coming across the border, uh, across the United States, and, and operating here in Ohio. We're talking about drugs. We're talking about human trafficking. We're talking about uh, cash and retail theft and electronic funds. Uh, It's actually breathtaking when you see it. And I run the Ohio Organized Crime Investigations Commission. This isn't something that I got off of Twitter or something that I'm reading from, you know, conspiracy internet. Uh, These are reports from the front line of our officers that are out there working on these task forces. And sometimes it's not just a big city issue either. This no. this is a huge problem in middle-sized and smaller cities that don't have the manpower to fight back or to fight in the way that they should have that they should be able to and that's one of the things that the state can help with. We saw evidence today from the local law enforcement. We had some very small uh, uh, municipalities represented. Uh, we had some villages and townships so these are these are small population entities, uh, and they are seeing the impact uh, from these this ridiculous border policy that we are living under. And any time that you have a hardened criminal that crosses the border, whatever state that that person winds up in is at risk, and that is something that we saw in the video. And you'll be able to see this video as well when we post the entire border security forum a little bit later on our social media channels. So be looking for that, but. Back in 2015, the people at the forum today got to see a very, very personal message from Bill Kostelnik, who told the story about coming home from work. His wife had come home from work early, and there was a police presence everywhere. He walks in and finds his wife tied to a chair and shot to death, and it turned out it was from an illegal migrant that is now doing life in prison. And, and the sheriff um, was here today and the prosecutor in Lake County uh, who were on the scene that day, nine years, almost nine years ago. And uh, it, the, the, the bottom line is that this was a very avoidable crime, that the, the perpetrator was 
um, was was uh, detained, and ICE was asked if they would uh, issue orders to have him further detained and given over to their uh, uh, their uh, possession, uh, and ICE refused to do so. And so the sheriff's department had no cause to hold that person during that time. Two weeks later, he murders Bill Kostelnik's wife Peggy in the most brutal fashion possible. So if 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 we don't think that that the problems at the border and the problems associated with a illegal border policy uh, it, that that it's going to come close to home, uh, think again uh, and, and ask Bill Kostelnik if he thinks it came close to home. And and it was nine years ago. So this is also not a new problem. This has been going on for quite some time. It's already here. And I thought one of the remarkable points that you made, Attorney General, during the forum was you talked about, here's what happens at the border. I think a lot of Americans and Ohioans think people just stream across the border. Uh, why aren't we just building the wall? They're, they're not coming in legally. But you told the story about how many of them actually wait in line they get up to the legal border crossing and they say what? How does the process work? So, and this is federal law. You have a right to come from anywhere in the world, basically. And if you come through a port of entry, a legal port of entry, and say, I am claiming political asylum uh, in the United States because of threats of oppression, of criminal activity in your home country, um, they give you a piece of paper saying here's going to be your date where you can prove that you deserve asylum and have fun in America while uh, we wait or while you wait around here in America to get your court date on your asylum claim. And word has gotten out. Um, my team that was down on the San Diego border last year watched as people lined up day after day and just came through like a turnstile at an amusement park um, being released into the interior of, of America. Our asylum, uh, look, we are, as Lincoln said, the last best hope, uh, but at the, at the bottom, we need to reform our asylum policy. We should provide shelter for those that we can, but the whole world can't live in America. No, and so the point is, you go to a legal border crossing, you declare asylum, you're allowed into the country, you're assigned a date then for a hearing, and the majority of these people don't show up for a date and disappear into the ether. They disappear into the countryside. Well, that, that's the other problem uh, that, that we have to talk about, in, and that is that the typical protocol in the past was that the country from which you directly came to the United States even at a legal border crossing, is where you would be re detained until your hearing was made possible, whether it's a year or two years or even longer. Um, and for a while, under the Trump administration, we had a return to Mexico policy uh, that I believe he did through executive order uh, that required that the, uh, an asylum seeker could claim asylum but would have to wait in Mexico until they were adjudicated. And that was uh, reversed by the Biden administration, I think, on his very first day. And remember, the Homeland Security Secretary, Alejandro Mayorkas, was impeached by Congress because the border was basically left wide open on day one of the, curtain of the current administration at the federal level of the Biden administration. One of the other very interesting points that was made by uh, one of the local officials here was what are we doing about sanctuary cities? Because all of the big sanctuary cities that we saw in the national news that said, New York City's open, we welcome these immigrants, same thing in Chicago. Now we're like, we can't take anymore. People are outraged about what it's costing, but they're also outraged that some of these cities are housing these illegal migrants in public schools and parents have had enough. So where do we stand on sanctuary cities in the state of Ohio? And maybe the law does need to be addressed about the home rule issue of a big city saying, we welcome these migrants. Well, if a political subdivision, as we call them, a city, township, a village, et cetera, um, 
adopt a policy that they are not going to comply with federal law, any law, that, that cannot and should not be allowed to stand. And if, and if that is occurring, we need to step in and, and create legislation that would preclude that from happening. That makes sense to you. Uh, where, where would you stand from the law enforcement side about the idea of sanctuary cities in Ohio? Because if you don't know who's in your city, then certainly you would think it would pose many risks, not to mention just the law enforcement alone and public safety. Well, here's the thing. Uh, if you've got uh, criminally minded illegal migrants in your city, they're not observing the city borders. Um, they're going over to the next inner ring suburb city. They're going out into the township. Uh, they're going to the next town over. Um, so this impacts the entire state. And I think the state has a legitimate concern uh, to be able to have a uniform rule of law. Yeah, and you, you made a really good point, too, that there was maybe a couple years ago a misconception, a misconception that these these were uh, Mexican citizens that were streaming across the border, but that's not the case anymore. We're seeing Venezuelans now. We're seeing uh, Haitians. Haitians. We're seeing uh, people also coming in from China. And you talked about how there is a real presence of drug cartels coming from China. In fact, uh, if you watched our last podcast last week, Senator Terry Johnson from McDermott, Ohio, Scioto County in the southern border, who chairs the Select Committee for Community Revitalization and has really tried to target this next generation of where the opioid epidemic has now transformed into fentanyl, talked about the triad uh, criminal organization from Asia that is now running fentanyl operations. I mean, is, is this what is happening? Some of these uh, gangs are crossing the border and running these operations even in Ohio. Uh, Senator Serino and I have been talking about this threat, um, and you're exactly right. The rise of military-age males from the China mainland has gone through the roof. We've seen these cases arising in Ohio through our organized crime task force. Um, one fella had done almost 500 um, very sophisticated rerouting of uh, gift cards uh, so that the money could be scraped off by the triad when it was used. Uh, and 54 of those occurred right here in Ohio. Uh, same thing with the drugs that we're seeing coming in. Uh, it, it's happening here in Ohio. Every state really is a border state under Joe Biden's America. Do you think that this forum uh, is a good start, a good place to start, to propose some changes that would help the Attorney General's office and law enforcement across the state? I, I think it is, John. And <clears throat> I, I think, you know, all, certainly all of the police officers and sheriff, uh, sheriff uh, representatives that were here, uh, I don't think we told them anything they didn't already know from their personal experience on a day-to-day -day basis, but perhaps the scope of things that they're going to be facing in the future was new information for them. And I think Sheriff Liam Bruno from Lake County uh, made a great point in suggesting that, that it's not just about people crossing the border. It's about uh, uh, infrastructure being set up that will be in place and operative long after we close the border. I believe effectively someday we will close the border, hopefully soon. But even after that fact, that the fact that there are tens of millions of illegals in here, uh, in the country uh, illegally, um, that they've set up this infrastructure, uh, which is basically organized crime, mm -hmm. that we will be dealing with for decades to come. It's the new version of the mob then, basically, Attorney General. So it's organized crime from every faction that has been able to come in, have enough capital to start it up, and then where does that money go? Does it go back across the border, or or do we know exactly where it goes? Yeah. Well, it, it depends on the individual organization, but you know, it, what it's not doing is, um, it's not multiplying here in our communities, it's not being turned over and generating jobs and wealth and opportunity for Americans. Senate Resolution 243 and the 134th General Assembly, which was the prior General Assembly, were in the 135th, 
passed 22 to 8 in the Senate. 22 members voted for it, 8 members voted against it, urging the federal government to secure the border. Senate Resolution 243, which is uh, currently pending, urges Congress to treat cartels like terrorist organizations. Senate Resolution 243, something you support? Absolutely. Uh, and, and, and why the Democrats in the Senate voted against these kinds of concepts is beyond my imagination. Uh, how could you be against protecting uh, the citizens of your state as it, an elected official. Is there a terror threat with some of these new organized crime elements that are coming across the border? So, as I said, Senate Resolution 243 would treat these organized crime units as terror organizations. Is there a real risk of terror, uh, and should they be treated like terror organizations? Well, of course there's a real risk, uh, and I think uh, Senator Serino is exactly right in supporting that sense of the Senate uh, resolution. Uh, now, when you get into the legal details, uh, of course, there are s probably some uh, I's that need to be dotted and T's that need to be crossed, uh, because I, I would think while uh, every terrorist organization is an organized criminal organization, it's not necessarily true that every organized crime uh, organization is a terrorist organization, but there's enough overlap that we ought to be looking for ways to treat the ones that are as the thing that they are. You know, this forum was something where it was really solid input about what the state could be doing to help local communities. Mr. Attorney General, what could the federal government be doing to help law enforcement at the state level in Ohio? What would you like to see done? I'd like to see them enforce the laws that are already in place to protect our southern border. We, we would see a dramatic drop in drug trafficking, human trafficking, other kinds of crime and extortion if they just did their job, if they just followed through with the, the laws that are already on the books. Yeah, even, even the liberal media is forced to report about the murder of Georgia nursing student Lincoln Riley by an illegal migrant. The, the country's fed up with this. The, the country's fed up, but, but the, and yes, some of the media is now starting to change their views a little bit, but at the end of the day, they still are attempting to, uh, to blame Congress for lack of action to solve the border crisis, which is ridiculous. And the fact is that there are laws in place currently that simply need to be enforced, and there's executive orders that need to be reversed that Biden put in place. We don't need Congress to act specifically. Perhaps in the long term, they can look at I immigration policy in a general sense. But right now, we have a leaky faucet that is flooding the bathroom. We need to turn it off at the source before we do anything else. One of the things, too, uh, a couple podcasts ago, Senate President Matt Huffman, I asked him about there also is an certainly an organized effort to target Ohio's Constitution to change the law regarding Ohio's elections. And there is the Voters' Bill of Rights, which has been a constant effort to try to get on the ballot so a person could register to vote and vote on the same day by just signing a simple affidavit that says, I am who I say I am, and then who knows where that person disappears to, whether that is a valid vote or not. Do you, and he, when I asked him, do you think that Ohio's election security would be at risk when you combine that with what's happening at the southern border? His answer was yes. Do you have an opinion about that, Mr. Attorney General, about election security and illegal immigrants, call them whatever you want to, whatever you think the politically correct term is. But when you have people flooding across the border, does that also jeopardize our way of running elections? Well, it certainly has the potential to. You know, Ohio, the General Assembly, uh, thankfully, passed a law requiring photo ID um, and tightening up the security requirements. Um, is something close to what it, you have to prove to buy a six-pack of beer. And you have to be a uh, resident to vote. Imagine that, and, right? And, yeah. uh, and I'm defending that law in court right now. Mm -hmm. I'm confident we're going to win. Uh, but it just goes to show you that the, the left wants what they want, and they're going to keep pushing to get it, whether 
uh, wh whether they can win elections or not. And isn't it interesting as well, as we've talked about on other podcasts, I think even with you, Senator Serino, about where some of the funding is coming from for these ballot campaigns targeting Ohio's Constitution. They're coming from outside the United States. Do you, what's your opinion about election security and the flood of people coming across the border? Well, I think, you know, I think the, our elections themselves, uh, I feel very comfortable that elect, elections are conducted in the proper fashion in Ohio. But in terms of influencing the electorate uh, with, with out-of-state, out-of-country money, that needs to be addressed, and we are tr attempting to address that in the Senate, certainly. I want to go back to you, John, if I could. Th the other aspect, besides just the voting, um, uh, potentially fraudulent voting uh, question, and that is the census. Um, I am introducing a Senate resolution next week uh, that will be directed to our federal government, all of our federal government office holders from Ohio and certainly the president and vice president, that, that they put in place policies for the next census, okay, that will preclude non-citizens from the ability to even be counted. Because voting issues aside, we can have all the voter ID you want, but what, what the Democrats want to do uh, is they want to have these people flood the U.S. and to be counted in census taking so that they can get more congressional districts and more electoral votes, which consequently go with that. Um, you know, a, a Senate resolution doesn't carry the weight of law, of course, but we, it's a strong recommendation, and I plan to introduce that because while the next census is a long ways away, it's time to start thinking about that now. Making news on the President's podcast. Final thought from you, Attorney General Yost. What's your basic message to Ohioans, that are hardworking, uh, pay their taxes, love where they live, care about their community regarding this issue that is happening at the border. How can they help out their own community? Well, I think that it's very difficult for an individual citizen to push back on this. That's why we need the federal government. That's why we have the federal government. Certainly the old saw about if you see something, say something, please do. Uh, if there's something going on down the street that looks a little hinky, um, please let law enforcement know. But at the end of the day, the solution here is going to be a voting solution. Look at where your problems are, where your community is, where your values are, and please don't sit out this fall. You gotta get out and make your voice heard. Uh, because ultimately, whatever happens at the border isn't going to be a function of the courts. It's not going to be a function of even the state legislature. This is going to happen in Washington, D.C., and the border is on the ballot. Ohio Attorney General Dave Yost, State Senator Jerry Serino. Gentlemen, thanks for talking with us today. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you soon.